Hey, what's up, everybody? Can you all hear me okay? Woo. How's the guitar <clears throat> sound level? Is it too, uh, too loud or... Or just right. So how do you pronounce your name, Ewan? I just probably murdered it. How was that, though? Ewan. Just Owen. Okay. Thank you. That looks like a... Uh, Either Irish or uh, Dutch or German. What's your, what's your nationality there? Irish. There you go. I lived there for a while growing up. <clears throat> Good day from Australia. Chops. Glad you could make it. It's early in the morning for you, right? Yeah, whoever's on, why don't you weigh in? Let me know where you're <clears throat> where you're coming in from. I'd love to see see where you're coming in from. So far we got Ireland, we got Australia, and the good old US of A right here. New York. Excuse me, man, that's some good broadcasting there. Anyone got uh, favorite <clears throat> Christmas songs that they like to hear on guitar? There's ones that just sound great on guitar to me. Two from New York, Cape May, Canada. Wrong way. <clears throat> Woo, that is called not in tune. New Jersey. I was born in New Jersey. I lived there for a hot minute. Born in Princeton, lived in Dunellen, and my family, <clears throat> so part of my family is still in Piscataway. Wrong way says Elvis. Like Elvis Christmas songs? Because I agree. Minnesota. Yeah, I'll bet you're snowed in. <clears throat> Allen family, I am sure you are. Hope you're surviving that. Here in, uh, I live just south of Nashville. And it is uh, sunny, 45, a little chilly, and um, but thankfully we're not hauling through the snow and dealing with that. We don't get too much of that here. All right. This is going to be a fun episode, I think, because we are going to reveal... Um, we're going to reveal some winners, and I'm going to talk a little bit about my uh, theme song, as many of you probably know, um, and give away some prizes and stuff. So that's super fun and very Christmassy, right? 
Belgium, love it. Welcome. Hi from the UK, Mark. Glad you could make it. Glad you can make it. So, uh, yeah, my my sort of all time favorite um, <clears throat> Christmas song on guitar is uh, Jingle Bell Rock because I saw. Excuse me. <coughs> and I don't know what that which come come over me. My voice has been fine all day. <clears throat> <coughs> sorry about that um i saw saturday night live years ago when i was growing up in the 80s and uh um ge smith when he was running the band um at saturday night live he he was him and the bass player i forget his name someone's gonna kill me um but they were part of the holland oats band in the early 80s um and i guess part of them went on to uh managed the Saturday, Saturday night live band for a number of years, G E Smith. And, uh, there was one, I forget what episode it was, but, um, he had a Gibson ES 335. Yeah. T-bone. Thank you. Um, he had a 335 and, uh, uh, on one of the, you know, outs before the commercial, how they start playing music. And he just went into the this is so cool. So I love all things rockabilly and old sounding. Um, but he just had that killer tone on it and I had to learn it. So, um, so that's one of my favorites and it's got like a, you can sort of do a one guitar arrangement that sounds pretty full where you're doing some of the, the cool bass line. I want to get into some of the, um, I don't know if it's jazzier chords, but you know, a little bit better chords than sort of basic. There's a, a little bit of that going on. There's, Sort of add those bass uh, bass notes on. That kind of stuff. It's fun. Super fun. So that's my favorite. Hello from Great Britain. Hello from Galveston, Galveston, Texas. Nice. Um, okay. <clears throat> so about 10 days ago, as many of you know, <laughs> so you're going to make me say hello, Cleveland. Hello, Cleveland. Um, about 10 days ago, um, well, I should go back farther than that. Um, pretty much as long as I've had the channel open for about almost two years, about a year and a half, I guess. Um, <clears throat> one of the most consistent questions I ever got was, you know, love the chords on your opening theme song. How do you play that? Um, and I was just going to pop on and make a video and here's how to play it. And then I was thinking, well, let's see if, cause I, my videos are all about sort of picking a song and figuring out how to play it and then making a lesson about it. And I was like, well, why don't I throw it open and do a little contest and and um, see if anyone could figure out those three chords. Um, and um, <clears throat> so as best as I could tell, best as I could tell as of a half an hour ago. So there were eight of you that actually recorded a video of yourself and posted it on YouTube. That was the only platform that I saw. So um, that I saw videos posted on, but eight Eight Brave Souls um, made a video of yourself, which I know is a big deal. It's it's a big deal to sort of turn the camera on yourself, right, and do it and put it out there. Um, so I'm touched that that you were to, that you thought enough to do that. Um, and um, so eight of you actually recorded versions of what you thought might those chords might be. Um, <clears throat> and for those eight people, all of you entered into a contest. Um, and one lucky person is going to win my boss EQ pedal, which I love this pedal. I can't say enough about it. It's the most versatile pedal you can add onto your um, 
your your pe- your foot pedals if you don't have one. It um, just because of how much you can sculpt your sound with this seven band EQ, which you already know that, right? Um, anyway, just a great pedal to have. So someone's some someone's going to be lucky enough to win that. And um, the rest of you um, are going to win a uh, free uh, prize from my merchandise store. And you can pick out what you want and I'll send it to you. So for everybody that entered, um, and thank you for doing that, you're all going to get something. All right. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'll give names out of here. So, <clears throat> all right. So Mike. Mike Orr, my neighbor, Douglas Allen, Owen, Gregory B, Ben Noob, uh, Ed Hickey, Thomas McCullough, and A. Joseph 86 all entered in here. Um, and thank you for all doing that. Um, I will say, I'm touched that you all did that. Um, somebody asked if, if anybody got it right, and actually no one's got it totally right. Um, some of you have parts of it right. Um, and that's okay. That doesn't matter. I'm going to show you how, I'm going to show you how I did. Um, <clears throat> but first let's talk about the winners. So I've got the eight folks here, um, on my other screen on Excel. It's got a random number generator on it. So I haven't picked a winner yet. Um, and, uh, I'm going to hit the random number thing. Um, and it's going to pick from that list of eight. I have no input into this of who's going to actually be the be the grand prize winner. Okay, so all of you are going to get something from my store. So you're all already a winner, um, though everyone who entered. But I'm going to hit. I'm going to refresh this random number twelve times. Right, fitting. I'm going to do it twelve times and see what number comes up, and I'll announce who's the winner for my boss EQ pal. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. The winner is Douglas Allen. Congratulations. Oh, that's Allen family. Okay, cool. In Minnesota. Minnesota. All right. So Douglas Allen from Minnesota, I will figure out how to get in touch with you and, um, <clears throat> and we'll get this worked out. And everybody else that's on the list, again, thank you. I will also get in touch with you, and we'll figure out how to how to um, get something, if you want something out of my store, um, how to get that to you, okay? So that's awesome. Congratulations to, to everybody. And I was so happy to see the entries on there. That was very cool. That was very cool. Um, but as I said, nobody quite got it 100% right. So let me show you how those chords are played. Um, so I, first of all, I wrote those or made up the little theme, um, uh, right when I was putting the channel together and like getting everything together, publishing a video, you know, doing the first video and I wanted to have something. Um, and I just sort of love, you know, spy, you know, all rockabilly stuff, anything like old era sounding spy chords, that's all stuff that I just love. Um, and so I wanted to write something and make something up that had that sort of motif with it. Right. Um, and so the key is F sharp minor. That's what everything is in and what it, what it resolves to. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm going to talk about the second chord first because just because, um, so the second chord is this augmented chord. Um, so on the D string, you're at 11. On the G string and the B string, you're at 10. And on the E string, high E string, you're at nine. So it's sort of like <clears throat> if you had a normal sort of part of a bar chord like this, what you're doing is you're just adding a sharp five to that. You're, you're sharpening the, uh, or raising the fifth by one semitone or one fret. That's the second chord. Okay. 
And the reason I showed you the second chord first is because it's easy for easier for me to describe the first <laughs> chord in context of that, right? So, <clears throat> so that's the second chord. So the so the way you do the first chord, picture just you're just gonna bar your index finger straight across on the tenth fret, um, and your middle finger eleven on the D string. Sorry, I'm blocking it. And ring finger at 12 on the B string. Okay, so if you think about the next chord after that, what you're doing is you're on the D string, you're you're starting up at 12 and you're moving down to 11. Right? Sorry, sorry, I've got things distracting me here. Sorry, my work is pinging me and I'm not gonna answer it. And I was wrong with what I said. So your, <clears throat> your first two notes of the, um, of the augmented chord, that's gonna stay on the first chord. So you're at 11 and 10, that's staying. What's changing is you're raising the B, uh, the B string up to 12 and you're raising the E string up one fret um, from nine to 10. So these, <clears throat> that's the, the notes that are different on the first chord. And they come back to this. And the other two are staying the same. Okay, so that's the first two. The last chord is um, just an F minor with your pinky on the fourth fret, um, which I think is a raised nine maybe, or F minor add nine. And I don't play the low string. I start it from the, uh, from the A string. So all together it was Sorry, my mic blocked it. <laughs> and that's how you do that. That's how you do that. Now, the other thing that's probably <clears throat> might be interesting to you is that's actually the very end of the, th of the little theme song that I wrote. Um, and if you listen at the end of my videos, when I'm saying, you know, thanks for watching and click here to subscribe and did you learn something new, that kind of stuff, um, low in the background, you'll hear some music and you'll hear some sounds coming up, right? Um, and it starts with this sound like that, right? And then it goes into sort of a two-two beat and chat and chat and chat and chat. And I do this little... <laughs> And then it goes to. So that's technically the full theme. And what I think might be interesting to you about that is the very first um, note or that sound that you hear that sounds like that. Um, if you've ever heard that Beatles song, Oh Darling, Oh, darling. Mm -hmm. Right, that one. <clears throat> At the very end of that song, um, you hear this sort of, you know, I'll do, do you no harm. And then you hear, right? Um, so that was the inspiration for that thing. But I think if you listen to that Beatles song, that is an actual chord. So if you just play a normally strung guitar back here, it's not a tuned chord, but I wanted a tuned chord for my theme. So I came back here to this guitar
my 335 and I tune the strings so that this is an F minor. And that is what kicks off the actual theme. I thought it was interesting. You may not, but I thought it was interesting. So that is my full, full theme, kiddos. But those last chords again, I couldn't tell you what the chord's called, okay? Second one. And then an F minor add nine. That's how you do that. And yes, I did it on this guitar on the casino. All right. So um, congratulations to all the winners. Um, I've got some questions that have come in over time that I'm happy to answer and would love to hear from you here too. So please drop any questions you have about anything you'd want to know. Um, maybe I have an answer for you, but drop it here in the chat. Um, and I would love to have a conversation with you. Um, let me check to see what's on here. Um, so there's a guitar chord in Battle of Menti's Twin Peaks score that reminds me of your jingle. Yeah, Twin Peaks. I'll have to listen to that again. That's definitely got that old retro sound to it. Um, DBH. Very cool. Merry Christmas, Shaky Blues. And Merry Christmas, Wrong Way. All right. Um, so please pop some questions in the chat. Um, I'm going to kick off with some questions that have come in over the last few weeks um, that might be interesting. <clears throat> um, okay. <laughs> this is a funny one. All your videos say how to play it like the record. Um, but why would you want to play it like the record? Isn't the point of music to be a creative art and shouldn't you make it your own? Yes. Yes, that is very true. And I am not saying that you have to play it like the record or you're doing it wrong um, at all. Um, but uh, um, the uh, the thing for me is always like, I, I use it as a learning tool. So I want to know. And when I was growing up, I always wanted to know when I was listening to this cool song on record, whatever it was, I wanted to know how they did it. Um, and so I would endeavor to try and play and play it so it sounded like that. Um, but I would use that as a learning tool. I would, you know, internalize that. And um, it, it every new thing that I learned that that they did will teach me something new. So I take that as a building block and build from there. So please don't think that I'm doing these videos because you have to play it that way or anything like that. I just I'm doing it in that spirit of like I would like to know how they did it and I can learn a technique from whatever it is that they did. And, and then we'll go on from there. Okay. Why <laughs> Richard asks, why are you playing an Epiphone when you've got a 335? Fair question. It's because I did, uh, I had the bigs B on this, on this, and it was for, I did the theme on this guitar and I wanted the bigs B bar and that's different. It's got a, these are single coil P nineties versus the, 335s, you know, PAFs. It's, you know, but you're right. It's, it's, I guess it's a better guitar. But everything is a tool for its own purpose. So maybe it's not a better guitar in all cases. All right. Um, so are fans of the channel officially known as the 12 foot chain gang? Could be. They're not yet, but maybe we can start something. That's a, Good enough, good enough uh, name. Um, okay, another question that came in. Uh, this was funny. I requested a song for a less a, a song for a lesson months ago, and I still haven't seen anything from you. What's up with that? Uh, I do. Um, I promise that many of the songs that I do are also things that come in on request. But I got to say, uh, some of the things that come in our request are super obscure. And there's nothing wrong with that. But um, for now, with the channel, um, I have to 
because I'm only really only doing one about one a week. That's really all I've got time for with everything in life. Um, so I sort of have to prioritize the songs that I do and I would like to sort of make the biggest impact as I can. Um, and so a lot of the songs that I choose to do are ones that I think would resonate with a larger number of people. So, um, please, if you have requested a song and you haven't heard it yet, um, that may be one of the reasons why I haven't done it. And everything is a yet. I, I do make a list. I do have a list of all those things. Um, and as time goes on, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure I will get to them. Um, but that's probably why it's happening at this stage right now, but please do keep requesting. I appreciate it. Um, Phil asks, have you got any lessons on free or bad company? I have one lesson on free. I have one lesson on all right now. Um, you can search in my channel you can find that. Um, so that one I did last year, uh, or over a year ago, I think. So that's on there and I haven't done any others for bad company, but they're on my list. They've got a lot of stuff. Um, that's just awesome. I love, I, I love bad company. They got, you know, a million songs that are great classic rock. So I'll get to it. Um, kind of related to the other question that came in. Most of the songs you do, there's already lots of videos on. <laughs> so how are you deciding the songs to do? Um, so for me, um, I, uh, I may have talked about this before. Part of the reason I started the channel is because I thought, just like when I was growing up, when you're growing up, when I was growing up learning songs, there was a lot of books out there, how to play whatever song, Beatles or whatever it might be. And they were all shockingly wrong. And I say wrong, like wrong key or doesn't sound anything like the record and, and all that kind of thing. And honestly, I was seeing the same thing on YouTube. Um, and I just, I, I just thought I had something to give right to that. Cause I think I could get closer on a lot of those songs. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm not perfect. Um, in fact, I'm sure I'm not perfect, um, about it, but, um, I think in a lot of cases, I'm a lot closer than a lot of what's out there on YouTube. Um, and so, uh, that's part of the reason that goes into some of the songs that I decide to do that are already out there. Um, and as I talked about earlier, I like doing songs that, will touch a lot of people that a lot of people know. So I'm sort of going through a lot of stuff that you've all heard, like Jimi Hendrix and Beatles and stones and, and much more. Um, because I think there's, you know, that definite foundation that needs to be there. Okay. Um, Thomas asks, are live streams no longer a Patreon exclusive? Um, that's a good question, Thomas. There are live streams that are for all, and there are other live streams that are Patreon exclusive. And I haven't done one in a little while, but, um, there are additional live streams that are only Patreon, uh, Patreon exclusive. So good question. Um, Jamie James says, I totally get it. Really learning a lot from your channel. Um, it all started for me when I was on a search for monkey man. Oh, cool. I'm super happy to hear that. I love that song. Yeah, that was a that was an awesome Stone song that I didn't think there was a lot of uh, good tutorials out there on. Um, that was a fun video to make. I saw that on um, some TV show in the '80s, Twenty One Jump Street. <laughs> they had a they had an episode where they played that song, and that was the first time I heard it when I was in college. Um, Okay. Um, did you get rid of the Rick 12 string? This is from Billy Dela Cruz. Did you get rid of the Rick 12 string because it's a pain in the neck to restring and maintain a new subscriber close in age? And we live through musical and video renaissance era, in my humble opinion. How did you know I had a Rick 12 string? Or were you the person I sold it to? <laughs> I did have a Rick 12 string. I had a Rick, um, like the hard days night, um, uh, double bound, uh, George Harrison 
12 string. I had that for know, about four or five years. Loved it. Um, and I did not get rid of it because it was a pain to string. It wasn't that. Um, it was that I wanted, I wanted to have a 12 string and I was looking at a Fender 12 um, or other 12 strings. And I ended up wanting a bunch of other guitars actually. Um, so I had two like Beatle correct guitars um, about two years up to about two years ago. One of them was that, that Rickenbacker 12. Another one, I had a 67 Gretsch country gent. Um, love both of those guitars, but I had them for a while and I sort of, they're, they're great for what they do. And at some point I was like, okay, I think I got it out of my system. What I, what I wanted from that, you know, I can't sort of do any much more with what they do and I wanted other things. So I sold both of those. Um, and one of the guitars that I got was that Epiphone, um, double neck that has the six and the 12 on it. Um, and it sounds different. It's a different sounding 12 string, but, um, but you can get it to sound, um, a lot like a Rick, um, you know, dialing in the tone and other things. So, um, so no, I didn't, I didn't sell it because of the restringing or anything like that. All right. Um, what else do I got? What kind of research do you do before you make your tutorial videos? Um, <laughs> there were other parts to that question that I'm not including in here, but it has to do with like, what kind of research do you do before you make your videos? Because you get a whole bunch of stuff wrong <laughs> about like the song history or who wrote it or whatever. And uh, yeah, I guess I've been known to do that. Um, I'm not a journalist. Don't pretend to be. And, um, you know, I'm a dad. I'm a husband. I work full time. I'm just a guy. And I like to do this. You know, I like to do this on the side. And um, I don't have time to, like, be the full time researcher and track things down. And a lot of things, there's a lot of dispute um, on a lot of song histories of uh, songs that I do. Um, and um, I just don't have the time to, like, really, you know, really, really, really dig. But what I do have time to do um, is on the musical side, right? So when I decide um, on a song, sort of the research that I do is more on the music side. So number one, I listen, listen, listen. Even if it's a song I've heard a million times in my life and played it for a bunch of years, I go back and I listen with fresh ears and I find different play. I, I look for all the places where a chord or a riff could be played besides what I think I know. So I push, I put my hand in another position to try and play the same riff to see if it works. Cause a lot of times I've found, um, by doing that, um, it's probably getting me closer to how in some cases that song was written or, or recorded because I find out that the reason he plays that riff in this position is because the next chord that he's going to is right here. And before I was playing the first riff here and then I'm moving up here and you know, it's just things that you discover. So I listen, listen, listen. Um, I find any video I can of the artist playing it live and preferably live close to the time that they released it or as you know, within a couple years. Um, so you know, there's a lot of artists that I like that are still playing music 30, 40, 50 years later kind of thing. And you can see videos of how they're playing some songs now. And maybe the where, where he's putting his hand right now to play the lead is the same way that he would do it when he was a 25-year-old, you know. Um, but I've found that a lot of times they they played it a little different in the old days. And they've got an easier way that they taught themselves to play it now. And I always want to learn how they did it back then. So all that is to say is I try and find video of them playing it back close to the time. Um, and I'm often very frustrated because videos of people playing music, they always focus on the singer. <laughs> so it's like right when they're going for like the guitar riff and the camera's on the guitar player. And I'm like, oh, cool. They're showing the guitar player. He's going to play the little riff and he's going to go into his lead. And then they like pan to the singer because then the singer starts singing. And I'm like, ah. Oh! But, um, but that's, I look for that. So I listen, find any video I can. Um, I watch other YouTube tutorials. 
um, to see how other people are playing it. Um, cause I do learn a ton, um, um, from that. And if it's something I want to get into about like the history of the song, I might do a little Wikipedia, I might do a little internet search, but you know, that's sort of hit or miss, like I said, and, um, God, you won't believe the debates of like, because I would love to know like what guitar specifically George Harrison used on insert song name here, right? Um, and in some cases, it's obvious. Some cases, it's documented. Other cases, it's documented and clearly wrong. <laughs> like, um, and so it's hard to know what to trust. And so I, I'm now shying away from making judgments of like so-and-so used a les paul on this song because then you hear no he didn't he was, it was an sg jr and quit making claims um yeah so that's sort of what i do all right let's see what's going on in the chat here john quinn good stuff thank you my friend um thomas cool joe blow hi from uk love the channel awesome thank you joe Love that you love it. Um, thank you, Alan family, monkey man lesson. Thomas hasn't seen anything wrong. Well, there's some stuff that's wrong. I'm not going to call it out. And then who's to say what's wrong, right? What's my favorite amplifier? That's a good question. That's a very good question, Jamie James. Um, I would say it's like bands or guitars or whatever it just fluxes over time um you know but of what's behind me um over here on the far that direction um that is my new princeton reverb tone master which i'm just getting used to now and that is a great amp um you've probably all heard like you've seen princeton reverbs um you know, from blackface ones from, you know, 64 to 67, they are so coveted. They're going at like 4,000 bucks, 5,000 bucks a clip. Um, there's in such demand for good reason. They're just a great amp and you can crank them up. They're like 12 Watts, crank them up and you get an amazing, um, amazing, cool, sparkle dirt, um, sounds from them. This is the tone master version, which they just put out. And, um, you can go research that whole tone master line that Fender's doing. Um, it's a great thing that they're doing in my opinion. That is a very cool amplifier right now. It's new, um, to me. Um, so I'm just getting used to that. I'm going to work through all these Jamie before I get to my, your answer. Next one is a deluxe tone master. Same thing. Um, new technology trying to mimic, a, a mid sixties blackface, um, deluxe reverb, um, at a fifth of the cost kind of thing. Um, and uh, they've got a bunch of other um, amen uh, amenities and features to them. Um, those are killer. They just are. And they make Fender makes um, tone masters for super reverbs and a twin reverb. Um, and uh, I'm sure they're they're killer. Also, they're just they have so many um, benefits to them. They're super lightweight, um, and you can plug them directly from an XLR cable out the back to the front of house. There's just a lot of great stuff to it. And it just, or you can just plug it and use it like a regular amp. Um, over here in the middle is a super reverb. That's a 64 Fender super reverb. And um, um, I'll come back to that. 63 Baseman. Um, I'm a super big fan of Brian Setzer. Um, and uh was lucky enough to find one of those last year um that's a great amplifier uh, that's the second newest amp there that's a it's a 50 watt plexi reissue from marshall um 1987x and never really owned a proper sort of plexi or plexi reissue in my life and um so i'm they are like sort of an instrument on their own merits um great amp um be surprised how great the clean tones are that come out of Marshall's. Um, I'm just getting used. I'm just getting used to it. I can't turn it up. So we've got the power station on top of there, the Fryette power station as an attenuator for it. Um, but that's a killer, killer amp. But my favorite amp, 
my favorite amp is my Super Reverb. That one there. Um, super Reverbs are, I don't know, I, I don't know, they're, for me, um, I think I'm partial to it because I had one when I was in college in the 80s, back when nobody wanted these amps. And I, I didn't even know how good I had it when I had it, but I had a 66 Super Reverb. And um, they're just awesome. four, 10, four 10 inch speakers, um, great Super Reverb, a great Reverb, uh, Spring Reverb in it. And it's got um, the vibrato. It's not the super hard tremolo i would like to to have more tremolo to it but it's got enough but you crank those things up and there's something magical when you get them up around like six um this mine this one here you have to crank it up a little more that's got a weird um uh, uh how, how it is how the volume ascends on that is odd <laughs> it's not an even run when you turn the knob anyway but when you get it up there in that sweet spot, it's so great because it's it's got whatever clean you want. You can roll it back a little bit on your guitar or you can just play with light dynamics and it's just perfect. And then you dig into it a little harder and it gives you that grit. And if you just want to do power chords on it and hit it hard, it's just got a super cool, full, big sound. So I, I think that Super Reverb is probably my favorite amp. Um, but it's going to change over time. You know, I'm going to get to learn how to use that Marshall the way it's supposed to. And then I'll come back and change my answer. I, I promise you, because that, that thing sounds just like 1973 Madison Square Garden, Led Zeppelin, Jimmy Page, since I've been loving you. It's, it's just, it's amazing. Um, but I don't have a full command of that amp and what it can do yet. Uh, Setcher lives here in Minneapolis. I did know that. Yes. Trying to connect up with him for a rock camp thing. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know he did that. I actually bought an amp from when he had a, from him, not from him personally, but he sold his, a bunch of stuff on reverb a couple of years ago. And I bought an amp. Um, I don't have it anymore. I sold it. It's a, it was a 1990 custom Vibrolux reverb. Um, and it was a very cool amp, very, very cool. Um, and I just wanted to move on um, from it. But um, Brian rules. Do you like any Alice Cooper stuff? John Quinn says, do we like any? Notice he has some good quality guitarists in his band. I like the song Grim Facts. Could not find any info on how to play that. I have to say, I'm sort of up and down on Alice Cooper. I mean... I wouldn't say I'm not a fan, but I haven't gone out and bought, like I didn't buy any of his records or tapes or CDs in the day. Uh, so maybe not the biggest fan, but I'm not anti. But I'll listen for that song, Grim Facts. I haven't heard that to my knowledge. All right. Well, if there isn't anything else, kiddos, um, I will say, I will say, uh, congratulations to the winners. Um, so I'll reach out, um, and, uh, and get connected to all of you. Um, you'll be able to pick out anything you want from the Shopify, um, store, which I will put a link in here. Um, don't buy anything. Don't pull the trigger on buying anything yet. For those of you who, who I mentioned are, are getting a free, free stuff. Um, I'll get in touch with you and we'll figure out how to get what you want to you and congratulations, special congratulations to, um, Allen family in Minneapolis. And, uh, I'll get you this, uh, EQ pedal. You will love it. If you haven't had one yet, you will love it. So, um, thanks for everybody that that uh, played in the contest. And one more time, that theme song. It's the first chord. Second chord. Third chord. All right. Happy holidays, everybody. Um, keep the ideas coming on songs, I promise. 
I will eventually get to them and um, have a great uh, holiday season and happy new year. And I'll see you in 2023. All right. Take care.